welcome lovely Aries to your general timeless reading. I will begin your reading with crystal scrying, some symbology cards, and then also some tarot and oracle as spirit spiritually guides me. All right, lovely Aries, let's go ahead and roll. Holy Spirit, Holy Divine, all who are with me in the highest divine realms of love and truth, as that you please give me clear understanding, clear communication skills, and clear interpretation skills for humanity's highest good for this Aries timeless reading, please, Spirit. Thank you. Spirit, Holy Divine, what information is most important for Aries to know for this timeless reading here? Thank you. Ah, okay. And what is, okay, Aries, you're coming through as an alligator. Very interesting. What is this? People looking. It's like you're being still. There's a little girl, which is symbolic of purity, innocence, that is right at your mouth. And normally, you know, we would not, <laughs> we would not get that close to a gator, right? But it's like this little girl is right there, not afraid of you. I mean, I'm talking, you're coming through as this massive gator, okay? And this little, tiny, innocent, pure girl, approximately four years old. Now, and you're you're not moving, you're not you're not attempting to cause harm, you're not attempting to do anything to this little girl. And it's almost like, and this little girl's eyes are open. They look like the baby doll eyes, the big round eyes. It's almost like this little girl. Yeah, she's sitting on a stool. Because she's so little. In order to be able to look up into your eyes. Wow, this little girl is looking at this gator, you, Aries, like soul to soul, in, in wonder, in awe. Now, Aries, on top of your head, which is very interesting, there is like, there is a, an energy. Ah, this is a thought bubble. I get it, Spirit. This is a thought bubble that is coming out of your head. This is why it's on top. Okay. There is a feminine energy. Now, this is not gender specific, but it's like this feminine energy has a hammer or a mallet. It's more like a mallet. Like hitting the top of your head, the skull. Which is very interesting because you would think as an alligator, there would not be some kind of fear. But it's almost like fearful thinking. Something concerning. This could be an actual child. This could, but it doesn't have to be. Normally, when I see children, it's uh, a project, um, a hobby. Oh my gosh. And I'm actually seeing this feminine that's your thought bubble chiseling something down into your brain, like, like an actual chisel, but it's like, um, it has, it has like a, like, a, you know, like a screw has the twisty things on it. So it's like a chisel. This person's chiseling it, but at the same time, as they're chiseling it, it's like really solidly making its way down and staying there. You know what I'm saying? 
So like something twisted. Yeah, something twisted. It's going to have to be untwisted. So there's some kind of thought pertaining to an idea you have, something you could have, but since the little girl is about four years old, this could be something that you have already started. So, for instance, like a new business um, that's not reached maturity yet. It's still in its young stages, okay? Um, or for others of you, if you haven't started it yet, this could be an idea that you've had about starting something new for, you know, quite some time, but you haven't taken action towards it yet. There's some kind of twisted fear-based something going on in your mind, Aries, that spirit saying needs to become untwisted because whatever this little girl is representing, and it could be a person as well, um, but whatever this little girl is representing for you, um, it's like this is something... Because she's looking like she's literally sitting on this stool to look into your eyes, into your soul. It's almost there's something either divinely guided or something that is meant for your purpose. But there's a there's a something some kind of thought process that has been either maybe it's your upbringing or maybe it's for some of you it could just be um you know if you're like me i've got tons of air in my chart so <laughs> my mind's always like overthinking things so but there's something going on here with some kind of fear-based thought that needs to be untwisted Okay, let's go ahead and go to the symbology cards. See, you know, a gator, normally gators are, they're all about family. Um, very good maternal instincts. Now, and remember, this is not gender specific. It's just saying that you are really loving when it comes to family. You really want to take high priority, but there's something getting in the way of that. And gators are also, it's like the be still and wait. So, you know, like, so like waiting for the right timing to react to, you know, like when gators don't always attack. Gators, you know, they feed. I could be wrong, but I feel like, I feel like it, uh, I researched it was like around every nine months or so or they will attack if they have young nearby um or if the, you know if they feel threatened or something like that so they're not always looking at humans as if okay i want to eat this human but the interesting thing is this this is a little child we all know or should know we don't have small pets and small children around gators, right? But this little girl, she's not, she's not afraid. She's, she's in, she's in such awe. I wish I could draw out for you what I'm actually seeing here because it's just very precious. And it's like you're smiling. It's like you're happy that this little girl, it's almost, yeah, thank you, Spirit. It's almost like this little girl, now remember, it doesn't mean it has to be a person. This, this can be, you know, you have to take it how it resonates in your life, a hobby or whatever. But this little girl is looking into your eyes as if I want, I want to understand you because you're such a beautiful creature. 
I, I want to know you because you're so beautiful. When normally people would run from this gigantic animal or whatever you want to call it. And, and I'm not sure. Is it an amphibian? I don't even know. This reptile. So it's definitely like something is presenting itself to you. But there's something, some kind of thought process here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the symbolic card. Spirit, Holy Divine, please give me the top two cards. Top two cards, please, for Aries. Please tell me when to stop. Top two cards for Aries. Please tell me when to stop. Now? Already? Okay. Retreat. And the game rules are changing. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, the thought bubble. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit that, guys. The thought bubble. Um, now, with the retreat, and the game rules are changing, I feel like what Spirit's saying here is, Aries, there's something you've been in your head about. This could be how maybe you were programmed as a child or some kind of belief system or tradition. Something here that normally, because like, again, normally a little girl is not going to be up at this huge giant gator, right? But the rules are changing here. There's something different going on. Instead of running in fear, this little girl is in awe, in wonder. And it's like Spirit saying with this retreat. There's some kind of thought process here that needs to be released. Like, give up on it and allow something here. The game rules are changing. Because Previously, what I'm getting here is previously, up until this point, certain rules worked before, or maybe these were rules that, the rules that you knew, but you're beginning to see something different, and if you're not, it's like Spirit is encouraging you to Think outside the box to look at things, something here differently. To change some kind of way of thinking. Okay, Spirit, where would you like for me to go with the cards? Is it this one? Oh, Spirit is wanting to start here. Very nice. Okay. What is the most important information, please, Spirit, for Aries for this timeless reading? Most important, please. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more? Oh, wow. Thank you. This one? Yes. Okay. And these. Yes. More from this deck? No. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. So we have, and I do not read these in the uh, reverse. Surrender your need to always be right. Give others the gift of letting them be right. Be yielding, not rigid. This will help resolve conflicts and improve your relationships. Okay. And then we also have 
Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious, like an inner energy vampire type thing. Um, if you are energized and happy, move forward. Okay, and the third one is surrender to rest and sleep. To prevent burnout, slow down. Honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep to rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. Okay. Very nice. All right, Spirit, where would you like for me to go next? Feeling is, oh, here. Okay, we're going to the tarot. Thank you. Spirit, would you like me to use three or four in each line? Four. Okay. Thank you. What is the most important information, please, for Aries? What would you like to tell Aries, Spirit? Thank you. I'm going to move these back. Hang on just a second because Spirit is wanting me to use a bigger spread here. Okay, so we start off with Knight of Swords. Okay, and reverse or upright, upright with the Five of Pentacles. Okay, so right off the bat, I feel like Spirit's saying, take your time about something here. The Knight of Swords, because these two came out together, um, the Knight of Swords is, you know, a rushing energy. Oh my gosh, the Gator, you were still, you were still. You were allowing this little girl. So this could be a project, a person. You were, it's almost like, I want to say buttering up in a sense. So, okay. So like, let's say if it's a person, best way I can describe it. Allowing someone, like not rushing in, okay. Allowing someone To have that wonder and awe about you. Having that connection first. Hmm. And wanting more. Like, yeah, like buttering, like buttering up. Uh, allowing this, okay, allowing this little girl to get close to you. Allowing this little girl to look into your eyes. To see your soul, the depths of your soul. And I'm also getting for a few of you, this is not going to be for everyone, but for a few of you, there because there was a thought bubble, you know, that feminine energy coming out of your mind was something twisted, right? There could have been a situation in your past for some of you where you rushed into something. Before you really took the time to know this person or allowed them to get to know you either way something ended to where you were left out in the cold it didn't work out in your favor and i feel like for some of you that's what this twisted thought process is it's going through your mind and i'm not saying you're twisted i'm saying there's a thought like a memory some of you may be using this to your advantage and i feel like that's what spirit's saying here to use this to your advantage what didn't work in a previous relationship 
or if, if you've had many in many previous relationships, look at what didn't work. Look at what did work. <clears throat> In an observer type of situation, use those tools moving forward in this new situation, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, Spirit, continue with this deck? Yes. Okay. What else would you like to tell Aries, please? What else about this situation for Aries? What else for Aries? Okay, thank you. Four Pentacles. Give me more about the Four of Pentacles, please. I feel like some of you may be holding on too tightly. This could be to this past situation or holding on too tightly of some kind of game rule. For something new that didn't turn out good in the past. Please clarify this for Pinnacles. Any more? This one? Yes. Okay. Queen of Swords. I feel like with this, okay. So I feel like with the Four of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords, I feel like, Aries, there is a situation here. You, you are holding on too tightly to something from the past. Again, I feel like it's some kind of thought process, some kind of memory. And I feel like Spirit's encouraging you to be able to see something clearly. Something new coming in. Because I'm, I'm getting the feeling. Because you're coming through as a gator. And the situation that I'm seeing. I'm feeling like. In the past. This could have been. At times. The queen of swords in reverse. In other words. Like cutting off real love, for instance, okay? Or cutting off the um, opportunity for something because of a past hurt, trauma, loss in finances, job loss, something here that didn't work out that you were really rushing towards, you really wanted. But when that did not work out, you begin holding tightly. For some of you holding tightly to your finances as well, um, this situation that you rushed into that left you feeling out in the cold, it could have affected your finances, most certainly. But that doesn't have to be for everyone. But I feel like for some of you here, this Queen of Swords, when that happened, it's like this, when I was seeing this feminine on top of you with this mallet that was driving this, like chiseling some kind of huge screw into your brain. It did something to your thought process regarding this situation, whatever it is. So, it kind of brought you into this Queen of Swords in reverse for quite some time. And some of you still may be 
in the Queen of Swords in reverse, which would be bitter, cold, um, like closing off your heart or closing off even the thought of an idea that has to do with whatever this was that you were running towards. But because the Queen of Swords is now in the upright, what I'm feeling, it's like Spirit saying, you're beginning to have clarity on this situation. You know, in the original tarot, the Queen of Swords, the clouds halfway are gone. But there's still clouds there. But they're gone just enough to where you can see out clearly. But they're still there. So I feel like there's still something because of the thought bubble. There's still something that needs to be changed, removed, um, reassessed. Something here. Because something isn't going to work the same way as in the past. Okay, Spirit, please give me more. What else, please? For Aries. Uh-oh. I just felt cold. Any more from this deck? That's what I thought. <laughs> Spirit is wanting me to go somewhere else. Okay, where would you like me to go, please, Spirit? Here or is it here? Here. Okay. Thank you. What would you like to tell Aries, please? What does Aries need to know most importantly? Thank you. Five of Wands. Yeah, tug of war. And I feel like this tug of war is internal. Should I, should I not? Going back and forth. Yeah, thank you. And I have one that fell right here at my belly. Hang on. What do we have? King of Swords and Six of Cups. Reverse or upright? Upright. Yeah, so we have King of Swords and Six of Cups that came out at the same time. With the Five of Wands. Okay. So, yeah, I definitely feel like there's some kind of internal conflict dealing with this six of cups a king of swords can be someone older or more mature so i'm getting two things here so for some of you because of this situation i feel like this six of cups regardless of how it resonates in your life and this king of swords is being represented by that little girl, okay? So for some of you, you know, Six of Cups, this can be soulmate energy, like past life energy where you have actually played a role with someone before, or it could be soulmate as in there was some kind of divine uh counterpart that was planned either prior to coming here or sometime during the course of your lifetime in this lifetime of two souls coming together and if you believe in twin flames then your twin flame coming in take that how it resonates for you But I'm, I'm, for some of you, like I said, I'm really feeling like there's some kind of tug of war. It's internal. It's like because of the thought bubble, you're going back and forth. Because something, something, it's almost like someone twisted a thought process in your brain regarding something here. 
maybe that you couldn't do something successfully or, you know, it could have just been something like, um, for instance, let's say if you were in a relationship, um, for an example, you uh, were with someone that was constantly putting you down, okay? And after some time, that sort of stuff, not realizing it, it can affect our thoughts and our actions. So there still could be something here, some kind of worry, some kind of thought process. going back and forth but you know the queen of swords is a person about you know that is very just um they really they really want it's like very trustworthy um very intelligent but i feel like this is all about overcoming this internal tug of war about the situation Okay, Spirit, please give me more. You want to continue with this deck? Yes, okay. More, please. What else for Aries? I just heard now go, whatever that means for you. Now go. What do we have? Ace of Wands. Okay, so Ace of Wands. So this very well, whatever this Six of Cups means for you, okay? Now, uh, for me, Six of Cups, that is, that's the memories, okay? Uh, they can't go back to childhood. Doesn't have to be. Like I said before, I already went through that. Um, but it can be a situation in this lifetime also, um, something you dealt with during childhood does not have to be. It could be somewhere, some just some kind of memory, some kind of thought, reminiscing about something from the past. The spirit is telling you whatever this little girl is representing in your life, this is a passionate, beautiful new beginning. And see, you see, this wand, it is surrounded. It's like it's forming out of lava, hot lava, where nothing can grow. And this wand is made from wood. It has a gold tip, but it's made from wood. Okay? This hot lava should not grow wood. Okay, so it's like spirit say there is there's something here that is very passionate, very happy, very exciting. That's available or getting ready to be available in your life. And it has the potential if, you, if this is what you choose and untwist some, something here. To bring in a lot of happiness, a lot of desire and passion with something. And things will grow out of this that you never knew were possible. Very beautiful. Okay, Spirit, anything else before we close? Anything else? Here? This one? Okay, thank you. What else would you like to tell? Thank you. Aries, whoa. Fall, something to do with fall. Because I just fell over. Fall or fell? I believe it's fall. Anything else? Anything else from this deck? No. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to set these up here. What do we have? Obsession. Boundaries. Okay. So we have obsession, infatuation, adoration, and addiction. I really believe this is the Ace of Wands here. Okay. 
There's something beautiful, whether it's love. If you're already in a relationship, this is that this relationship you're in has the potential to really move to the next level, to really blossom and bloom, things growing out of it where it shouldn't, okay? Um, if you're single, this could be a relationship coming in towards you. Again, that, that king of swords energy. Lots of adoration. And this this is not like obsession, like, you know, being crazy obsessed. This is like beautiful. Lots of love and respect and kindness for each other. And then we have boundaries. No, drawing the line enough. Yeah, I feel like for some of you, this these are boundaries within yourself, within your thought process, because we have the game rules are changing. OK, so. You know, anytime I, I had to learn the hard way, anytime that I set boundaries, I make sure to start with myself um, of what I will accept, what I will not accept. OK, what is good for me in my life, my career, whatever. Right. And then work from there after setting strong boundaries with myself um, and getting those in place, then looking externally you know around me my environment the people i'm around the situations i'm around you know um and start setting boundaries in those situations as well and for some of you if you're coming into a new relationship that could also need to make sure that there are clear boundaries coming from both sides that you are giving clear boundaries like this situation that you were in before making sure that, you know, you give clear boundaries to this person, um, you know, and making sure that that person gives you clear boundaries and making sure each person understands when they're setting these or speaking these boundaries. Okay. Anything else, Spirit? Oh. Here, Spirit's drawing me back to this deck. Okay, there's something else. Wow, okay. Bitterness, resentment, anger, hurtful words. Yeah, see, remember earlier I said, okay, any more? I said um, I was feeling the Queen of Swords in reverse when this situation happened. So that's what this card is, okay? And then we have exhaustion, depletion, drained, long journey. Yeah, and you have here surrender to rest and sleep to make sure to take care of yourself. Also to remember if you, uh, and this can also be about the boundaries to make sure that, you know, you start looking at what may be draining your energy and setting strong boundaries, starting with yourself, of how much you can give of yourself or none, whatever it is. And then uh, working externally, return, second chance, opportunity, making amends. Now, I want to say here, I do not believe that this Six of Cups is a past person coming back okay um i believe these are two separate things here i feel because the six of cups is not about someone coming back it's memories it's thoughts and it's also soul connections okay it's childhood memories as well memorabilia okay um this I feel like has no connection to the six of cups. Okay. So return second chance opportunity making amends. So what I'm feeling with this is not a person returning. Okay. I'm getting here a second chance. It's kind of like a do over. Okay. So the best example that I can give right now in this moment is Whatever this was you rushed into before, okay, whether it was a job, relationship, whatever, 
left you feeling out in the cult. And you became that queen of swords in reverse, okay? And it did something to you because it, it, it either hurt you financially, it hurt your heart, or it could have been the mixture of both, okay? So there was time, a time, a long time for some of you, you didn't want to experience that pain again, right? Or that financial loss again or whatever it was. So you kind of built like this, uh, this wall, okay? Not wanting to experience that again. But what I'm feeling is spirit is literally giving you a second chance, a second opportunity. Opportunities, opportunity for this to happen, whatever. So let's say if it was a romance, okay, that went sour and you had, you gave your all, okay, you gave your whole heart, everything, right? And this person took advantage of you somehow and it really hurt you. Then now it's like, there's this little girl that was coming through honest, pure. And I'm not saying pure as in perfect. I'm speaking spiritually, okay? Pure. Innocent. Looking into your eyes, into your soul, in awe and wonder. It's almost like this person looks up to you somehow. Even though this person may be older, even though this person may be more mature, there's something about you this person could feel because uh, it came, the King of Swords came out with the Six of Cups. This person could feel some kind of soul connection to some of you. So, there, but there's something here. This person looks up to you in awe and wonder, in complete amazement. They're not afraid of you when they should be because you're a gator, right? But this person's not afraid of you. And it's almost like as you begin untwisting this past situation here that caused a lot of bitterness and hurt a lot of hurtful words, a lot of anger. Spirit is like giving you some kind of second chance here. So if this was love, at true love this time, at unconditional love this time. If it's a job, Spirit is giving you a second chance at your life's passion, life's dream. Okay. Something that you will feel addicted to because you just love it so much. You have such a passion for it. Okay. Anything else, Spirit? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close. Thank you so much, lovely Aries. May you have an extremely blessed and lovely week, my friends. Bye-bye.